Here we go again. It's the Boston Bruins and the Toronto Maple Leafs in round one of the Stanley Cup playoffs. And on today's show, we are previewing this series with Mike DiStefano of Locked On Maple Leafs. Your Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Bruins fans, and welcome back to the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. I'm your host, Ian McLaren, and this is a daily show where we discuss all things spoke to be. Today is Friday, April 19th, and I want to thank you so much for making Locked On Bruins part of your daily routine free and available on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by Monopoly Go. A big fan of Monopoly Go. It's a mobile hit twist on the classic Monopoly game. Join your friends, download Monopoly Go now on the App Store or Google Play. For anybody who's new to the podcast, again, my name is Ian McLaren, a lifelong Bruins fan. I've been covering this team for various outlets for 20 years, was a full-time hockey news editor for The Score, and have been hosting this podcast for the last five years. Very excited to get into another round of playoff hockey beginning Saturday, game one against the Toronto Maple Leafs. And again, on today's show, myself and Mike DiStefano of Locked On Leafs talking about the biggest storylines, players to watch, X factors, predictions, and more. So let's get into it on this fresh episode of Locked On Boston Bruins. All right, Bruins Leafs happening once again. And, uh, I'm Ian McLaren of Locked On Boston Bruins, joined by Mike DiStefano of Locked On Maple Leafs. And we're going to preview uh, this series, which, uh, yeah, I can't believe it's happening again, but here we go. We're going to start by talking about uh, some of the biggest storylines around this series for each team. Mike, uh, what, what do you got? I mean, there's there's a lot of big storylines going on uh, with the Maple Leafs. I mean, when it comes to this matchup in particular, I think the big storyline is, you know, can the Leafs finally get over the hump? Can they beat the Big Bat Bruins? Like, we don't have to go too far in this team's history to, you know, find where Leaf fans will be scared of this series. I mean, think back to 20. Uh, 2013 when it was 4-1, 2018, 2019. So, you know, I think the the big storyline in Toronto is just flat out, can the Leafs get it done? Can they beat the Bruins? And I think it's 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 going to be difficult. I think it's going to be a terrific series. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, but I do think it's going to be vastly different from the other ones. Like, I'm sure... Mm -hmm you feel the same way. The fact that there's no Patrice Bergeron, there's yeah. no uh, Zidane Chara, who was a big factor back in the day. Like, I think that definitely uh, makes things different, I guess, and maybe not different in a bad way or in a good way, just different overall. So I am excited mm -hmm. to see what this year's edition of Leafs Bruins in a playoff format looks like. Yeah, I mean, you're right. It's, it is totally different from when these two teams last played in the playoffs 2019. For me, that was like the, the last run for the Bruins core that had been so successful. It's such a different team now um, from 2019 yeah. to 2024, and notably with uh, Patrice Bergeron not around, David Krejci as well. That's the biggest storyline for me for the Bruins is – looking at, you know, having Bergeron and Krejci down the middle for so long. And now you've got Charlie Coyle, Pavel Zaka down the middle coming off career seasons, but obviously the playoffs is such a different animal. So my big question is, is whether or not they can produce while yeah. kind of also containing the core four for, for the Maple Leafs up front. That's, that's a huge question mark for me, of course. Yeah, like I, it, you know, when I was previewing the show on Locked On Leafs, Dave and I, I'm looking down the middle at the each center core, and I mean, I'm thinking, okay, advantage Toronto. Like, 
Uh, yeah, as uh, like for years, you know, the Boston Bruins have had this incredible depth down the middle. But then when Bergeron and Krejci both retire, you know, that really left uh, a void. Like how concerning is it going into a playoff series uh, when you look at the center depth, which, you know, we know is a very important, especially when it comes to the playoffs. And mm -hmm. you're sitting there looking at Zaka, Coyle, Geeky and, yeah. and Bokvis down the middle. Yeah, I mean, they, the Bruins did call up uh, John Beecher from the AHL on uh, Friday. He's He was their second-best face-off man this season in limited sample size. But, yeah, it's obviously um, not the same Bruins down the middle as they had been, and there's real question marks. And now it is interesting to look back at last year against the Florida Panthers, and you had – Bergeron out of that series for the first four games and the Bruins had a three, one lead after that point, obviously not saying they were better off without him, but still they were able to find some, uh, something that worked there with Charlie Coyle with Brad Marchand. And then you have uh, the Zaka and David Pasternak combination. So it has proven to be effective, but again, who knows in a, in a playoff series and especially against a Toronto offense that uh, that is much more loaded than Boston's up front for sure. I think another storyline for the Maple Leafs going into the into the series is what's the blue line going to look like. Mm. And you know, in Boston, it looks like things are pretty settled and pretty set. Like you guys have had three consistent solid pairings, you know, throughout mm. the whole season, and you've got top studs like Hampus Lindholm and Charlie McAvoy. It's not necessarily the case in Toronto. And mm -hmm. what worries a lot of Leaf fans is the fact that Sheldon Keefe never really was able to find a, a group of six guys that he liked that he felt comfortable with. I mean, mm -hmm. right up until the final game of the season, game 82, he's still kind of changing around the D pairings and trying to find things that fit. Um, we have an idea of what might work, uh, you know, right now with Riley Labushkin and then Benoit and, and, and Jake McCabe. You know, the third pair, there's still a question mark whether or not TJ Brody's even going to be in the lineup, which oh, is, wow. yeah, it's it's yeah. quite, you know, insane to, to <laughs> say, considering how important and vital he's been to Lee's blue line of late. Yeah. This game has seriously dropped off this year. So, um, you know, the question is now, okay, is it Joel Edmondson and Timothy Lee? Pilgrim. Is it Edmondson and Brody? Does Edmondson fall out of it? Does Labushkin come out of, you know, the does Labushkin come out and Brody go back with Riley? There's still so many question marks on the blue line. Uh, and I think that's a, a big time concern for a lot of Leaf fans going into it is, you know, defense, defense wins championships first and foremost. Mm -hmm. And yep. just not exactly sure if that, that blue line is going to be able to, to hold up for a long playoff run. So that's another big concern and storyline heading into the playoffs for Toronto. Yeah. I've been saying that as well, obviously focusing on the defense. So I'll touch on the goaltending later on as well, but um, for the Bruins, they have had a pretty set top six all season long. They have been shuffling the bottom pairing around a bit. Obviously the, the top four of Lindholm, McAvoy, uh, Brandon Carlo, Matt Grizzlick, pretty much set in stone. Kevin Shattenkirk and um, Parker Wotherspoon have been rotating in and out. They got a young guy in Mason Lorai who stepped up. Uh, but the one guy who has been uh, pleasant surprises is Andrew Peak, who they picked up at the trade deadline from the Columbus Blue Jackets. He's filling in for Derek Forbort, kind of with that physical penalty killing kind of role. Uh, so he's pretty much locked in there. We'll see what the other pairings are, but I think that consistency for the Bruins over that. I mean, you didn't even mention uh, Connor Timmins, who in my mind probably should be in there as well. I don't know if I know he had that mono uh, belt with mono, maybe not getting into the top minutes, but he's still uh, for me a, a decent option for many other teams. Uh, so we'll see what, uh, what the defensive matchups are and whether or not uh, the Bruins can take advantage of that uncertainty on the blue line for, uh, for the Maple Leafs uh, coming up after the break, we're going to discuss some key players to watch and uh, we'll touch on that as this Bruins Leafs playoff preview continues. 
If you are looking for life insurance options here, then there's no better place to check out than Policy Genius, the country's leading online insurance marketplace. It saves you time and money so you can provide your family with a financial safety net starting today. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million of coverage. Some options even offer same-day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Policy Genius helps you compare your options from top companies and their team of licensed experts is on hand to help talk you through it. Policy Genius gives you unbiased advice from a licensed expert support team, and there's thousands of five-star reviews on Google and Trustpilot from customers who found the best fit for their needs. Check life insurance off your to-do list in no time with Policy Genius. Just head to policygenius.com slash locked on NHL or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com slash locked on NHL. All right, continuing on our playoff preview here of the Bruins and the Maple Leafs. Just a quick reminder before we get back into it to check out Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories, news, analysis, opinions all across the sports world, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day and uh mike we're turning our attention to key players to watch here in this series obviously there's a few leafs that uh jump out who who are you gonna start with yeah i mean it's 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 the big boys right that's gonna be the you know that they gotta lead the maple leafs through this whole playoff so and and that's kind of been a, a challenge uh for them throughout the course of their playoff history especially against the bruins so um, definitely going to be a big spotlight on those guys. I guess we'll start mm-hmm. with Austin Matthews, the the best of the bunch, right? The guy's yeah. going to have a, a chance to snag an MVP already. You know, corralled himself uh, uh, another Rocket Richard Trophy with 69 mm-hmm. goals. Still out, just outrageous to me yeah, that he was yeah. able to to do that. But can he continue that forward into the playoffs? Like that's the big question, right? Um, last year he he had a good first round against Tampa Bay but then went radio silent in round two against the Florida Panthers when, you know, there's speculation that there was injury involved there based on how he looked. I, I agree. He never came out and said that there was something bothering him, but um, regardless, zero goals in five games. And, you know, they found themselves eliminated uh, pretty quickly in round two. So, you know, his success clear, is what's going to drive the Maple Leafs. So um, can he continue uh, down this torrid scoring path and continue to score in virtually every single game? If he could do that, I think the Maple Leafs clearly have a good chance to uh, to compete here and maybe even win the series. Obviously, Mitch Marner is another player that the, you know, the playoff demons are there. Uh, right. He did have a pretty good series against the Bruins, if I recall, a couple of years ago. But... You know, the, he's always been much maligned for being a, a guy that fades in April and the, the going gets tough and he's got to, you know, get in there and play against physical and guys start leaning on him and taking ice away. He, you know, the, the narrative is that he shies away from that and kind of fades, but he's going to need to battle through that and fight through that right. and get Toronto, uh, you know, try and produce for the Maple Leafs. And I believe, um, they're going to start on separate lines, Mm. uh, which is interesting because for the last few seasons, those guys have been pretty well attached at the hip, but you know, there's been portions of the season this year where they've been taken off each other's line and they've been able to find some success uh, individually without each other. So I think they spread the scoring by removing those two uh, from each other. So uh, this of course is assuming that Max Domi is healthy and ready to go. But Mm. when you got both of those players, if they're, at their best driving two different lines, they can produce a lot of points for the Toronto Maple Leafs. So those are kind of two guys that you're going to have to be uh, certainly going to have to be locked into if you are the Boston Bruins. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. And on the other side for me, uh, it's obviously, uh, I'll talk about David Pasternak in a moment, but the key players to watch for me are guys who don't play at the same time. And that's Linus Allmark, Jeremy Swayman. Uh, I've argued all season long that the reason the Bruins have been able to succeed this season is because of the goaltending. If you look at their underlying numbers, they're regularly outshot. They're regularly out attempted by the opposition. Uh, the Bruins ranked third in the NHL in, in save percentage uh, overall and at five on five. The fact that they can have um, an elite option in net every single night through the regular season was a huge advantage for them. And uh, on Thursday, general manager Don Sweeney said they, they had a plan for the goalies. Um, the same guy who reportedly tried to trade Linus Allmark had the trade deadline. You obviously with goaltending, you have a guy that has to sit uh, every game. So who's going to start? And the big question for me is, you know, are they going to continue to employ that rotation uh, yeah. or will they go kind of with the hot hand? Uh, so so what do you think, what do you think is going to happen there? Like, I really don't know. Really? I think I think it'll be Jeremy Swayman who will get the start in game one because he had pretty good numbers against the Leafs this season. Mm -hmm. um, I think I don't I don't think they're going to do like a, one guy gets the odd game starts and one guy gets the even starts it'll probably be um you know at the very least the first sign of trouble you you just go with the next guy kind of thing but uh, what if so there's no trouble i mean do they just roll with swayman like that's that's the, yeah. the interesting thing about the the goalie conundrum that they have yeah. out, out, out in boston with you guys because um i know that i've i've heard them say they they do plan to deploy a tandem yeah you know, tandem and net throughout the playoffs, just like they've done the regular season. It worked in the regular season. So yep. the assumption is it'll work in the playoffs. But that being said, how do you pull a guy? I mean, if Jeremy Swayman goes out and puts, a, uh, you know, the Bruins win, let's say 3-1, and he yep. has 32 saves, you know, a couple of big stops, you, you're going to pull that guy out of the lineup for game two no. just because you've yeah, got I don't a plan so. to go with to go with Olmark. Only the Blue Jays do stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. The yeah, Jays that's a prime right. example. I had talked about that last year, how how you can have the plan, but things change, right? Like like you mentioned, Toronto Blue Jays, Jose Barrios, you're cooking. <laughs> There's no reason to take the guy out. Uh, ideally, you know, Swayman, say he starts game one, stays hot. The Bruins go 16-0. <laughs> There's, no, There's no question, but right. – um, I think all Mark will be in there at some point. One of the big looking back at last year, one of the big advantages the Panthers had over the Bruins in that series was that they, you know, Alex Lyon played so great down the stretch, but they went to Bobrovsky earlier in the series than the Bruins did with Swayman. And that was to their advantage. So yeah. at the very least, you know, give them a, a couple games. Uh, but I, I could see a situation where one guy doesn't get more than than two starts if there is any signs of trouble um but it's going to be very interesting I, i'm not sure what what jim montgomery is going to do there but uh my suspicion is that swayman will at least get uh get the start for game one and then we'll see how it goes from there well um, on the opposite end things aren't as solidified in toronto at least uh there's two goaltenders who you have faith in that can give you elite play, whoever ends up starting game one, two, three, whichever game they go, whoever you yeah. throw in, you're going to get good goalie play. play. Not necessarily <laughs> uh, as comfortable in Toronto with it right. being Samsonov and Joseph Wall. Samsonov likely to be the starter. It's yet to be announced, but I think it's extremely likely that he's going to be the guy. And this is someone right. who was quite literally – uh, placed on waivers, made it through waivers um, back in December. And, you know, he's fought back and he's played well and he's earned uh, the number one role back. But it's always up in in the noggin here. Well, the, mm -hmm. three, four months ago, the guy, you know, couldn't make a save. And uh, if you look at the last couple of starts, uh, it was not great for Ilya mm -hmm. Samsonov either. So the last two starts, he's allowed five goals in each of those games. So uh, there's some there's some anxiousness uh, when it comes to the Maple Leafs goaltenders as well. Um, but like I said, I would take either Swayman or uh, Olmark over both of the dudes yeah. that the Maple Leafs get to throw out there. So um, sure, it, it's, yeah. it's a good problem to have if you're Boston. So be yep. happy and be yeah, lucky yeah. that you have two solid dandies over there.
Yeah. And then I have to mention before we take another break here, David Pasternak, obviously a guy to watch. Um, just a few points shy of his career high from last year, but his assist total was uh, smashing his career high. He's become uh, not just an elite goal scorer, but he's become a, a play driver for the Bruins. Um, and I would love to see him. There have been times where he's been criticized for turning the puck over too much. It's because he has it on his stick a lot, but also for uh, maybe trying to distribute when he could just get a shot on net. And like you're saying, if, if Samsonov is um, perhaps a bit fragile or there's a chance to beat him there and take advantage of that, just get the puck on net and uh, Pasternak could have a, a pretty big series against uh, either of those goalies. Uh, Pasternak, yeah, he, he's not yeah. in the MVP conversation, just outside of it because of the big numbers that Matthews, Kucherov, McKinnon, McDavid put up. But uh, for me, he's had a very impressive season for, for the Boston Bruins. Uh, we're going to discuss some more X factors and make some predictions on this series here as this Leafs Bruins preview podcast continues. There's going to be some heavy competition over the next couple of weeks around the NHL. And if you want to have uh, something to do that's not hockey related, I can't recommend Monopoly Go even more. I've got a competitive side and it's a huge fan of Monopoly Go. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. It's a great twist on Monopoly where you can play on not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in some crazy locations, building up some cool cities, bringing in big money. The best part is messing with my friends. I can charge them rent on iconic properties, just like classic Monopoly. I can also heist their vaults of riches for myself. And the leaderboards show me who the biggest Monopoly tycoon is. Break out your monocles and your top hats. Download Monopoly Go free on the App Store or Google Play. Get in the game, join your friends, and uh, become the tycoon that you were destined to be. All right, it's time to uh, talk about some X factors and make some predictions. Who are some kind of under-the-radar players that uh, Bruins fans should be aware of there in, uh, in the blue and white? So I'll throw a, I'll throw a three pack at you. Um, I'll give you a couple forwards and then a defensive that I think is going to to make a big impact here. I'll start with the D man, I suppose, and and I think Jake McCabe is going to be an X factor mm. for the Maple Leafs. He's kind of taken over as the team's most reliable defensive defenseman. I believe he's going to get the mat the the Pasternak matchup, mm. and he's going to be in charge of trying to you know keep him uh, in check as much as possible. Um, so that's one that, that you're definitely going to have to, to keep an eye on. And he's a physical guy. I mean, we saw the last time these two teams played, he got up in Marshawn's grill. So, you know, he's not, he's not shy when it comes to getting physical. And, and I believe it'll end up being quite the physical matchup. And he's someone mm -hmm. who's going to be in the mix the, the entire time. So he's, he's one of the guys, especially on the blue line, someone who uh, can make a big impact. Uh, either positively or negatively if he's not on his A game. Uh, two other ones I'm going to throw at you. It's not necessarily, uh, a, a, you know, a, a surprise name or, you know, someone who um, is going to come out of nowhere. But uh, Tyler Bertuzzi, for me, mm. uh, former yeah. Boston Bruin, obviously. Yeah. And you saw firsthand how well he played last season in the postseason. Mm -hmm. You know, his game translates really well. To, to the, you know, playoff style hockey, just kind of a hard nose, go to the net type of player. And um, another dude who doesn't shy away from getting into the mix. So I yep. think that Tyler Bertuzzi, who's really found some good chemistry playing alongside uh, Austin Matthews of late, uh, he had a, a really tough start to the season, but ended on a great note, uh, ended up getting 20 goals after going I think it was like 30 something goals with the, or games without a goal. It was insane. Oh. He was so snake bitten. It was, yeah. it was wild. Uh, but you know, he, he started scoring towards the end. And I think that's, what's going to be key is, is secondary scoring for Toronto. You know, yeah. I think the big boys uh, will end up kind of silencing each other, canceling each other out when, in terms of, you know, like Pasternak, Marshawn, uh, and then Matthews and, and Nylander and Marner. 
But then, all right, who can get the secondary scoring? Is it right. going to be Bertuzzi? Or is it going to be, you know, a guy like Matthew Nyes, Max Domi, John Tavares? You know, can those guys score enough and outscore the depth on the Boston Bruins? Because I think that's ultimately – um, I think that's an advantage for Toronto. I think they're a much yeah. deeper team up front, uh, sure. and they're going to have to uh, make it matter, make it you know mean something by uh, scoring and putting pressure on the Bruins' depth. Um, right. So I think that a guy like Tyler Bertuzzi and Matthew Nyes too, uh, I think those guys have chances to to be big time X factors. And then I'm going to throw this one out there. It's not a player, but uh, special teams I think special teams is always going to be an x factor and yep. in the regular season series between these two teams boston had the clear advantage i think they had like a 91 percent pk 30 percent power play it was really the difference in the series this year mm-hmm. um throughout the four games but if toronto can clamp down if they can stop boston's power play if they can figure out a way to slow down pasternak um then i think they have a good shot at winning this uh, winning this uh, this playoff series, uh, the power play had been struggling mightily, uh, just twelve and a half percent since March first. So oh, it's wow. not, yeah, it has not been great heading into the postseason. But when you look at the collection of players that do play on that top power play unit, you just have to think that with you know the the playoffs starting, everyone's back at zero. It's a new season effectively hopefully uh they can get it going and and that power play can be a factor as well because i think special teams is always always a big reason for why teams win and lose in the playoffs so uh, whoever wins the 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 special teams battle will have uh, the best shot at winning the series yeah yeah i totally agree with that and at the same time boston's power play was pretty bad over the last little bit as well i think Pasternak and Brad Marchand combined for like two goals over the last couple months of the season on the power play. Yeah. Uh, so if they can't get it going, that's a big advantage for the five on five. Let's just play five on five for the <laughs> yeah. whole game. Let's go. Yeah, exactly. Two. Come on. Yeah. Uh, in terms of X factors for the Bruins, there's a couple that jump to mind. Jake DeBrusque always seems to up his game against the, the Leafs in the playoffs. Uh, who knows if he can – bait somebody into a suspension once again but um he's been a bit obviously inconsistent throughout his career again this season uh quiet down the stretch but hopefully uh as a pending free agent he can up his game uh for boston's benefit and his own in the summer uh trent frederick's another guy look at you were talking about secondary scoring uh these two guys debrusque and trent frederick very quiet down the stretch. They need to step up. Uh, Frederick especially can put the puck in the net, but he can also get under guy's skin. Um, the trick will be doing it in a way where he's not finding himself in the box uh, at the same time. And then lastly, got to talk about Brad Marshall and the captain looking to make his mark as uh, the guy with the C. Hugely disappointing result last year um the last few years really and with that c on his chest you you got to know he's going to be wanting to to make his mark and, and uh help this team get further than they did last year it's just going to be a tough task like i don't really had i didn't really have high expectations kind of cup contender wise for the bruins this season they exceeded all my expectations in the regular season um largely because of the goaltending and I think you talked about it as well. Like it's going to come down to whether Boston's defense and goaltending is enough to withstand Toronto's attack and whether Boston can take advantage of the goaltending on the other end and the defense, you know, enough to, to get by. It's going to be a a super tight series. I think probably going to go to the distance um what do you what are you predicting for this uh for this series mike yeah uh on lockdown lease we did our prediction show yesterday and uh i'm not going to veer away from it so i'll i'll just basically copy and paste what i said there i believe this game this series does go the distance as well i think we see seven games and for the first time since 1959 i believe the toronto maple leafs will come out victorious in a seven game series against the boston bruins 
Um, I, I, I just don't think that like, I, I, I know that lots of Leaf fans are terrified, shaking in their boots and yes, Boston, you know, was pretty much at the top, you know, the division all year long. And I know they have home ice advantage and all that is, is, you know, it was all fine. Um, but I do believe that this is a much different Boston team uh, than the Leafs have played in the past. You know, no Bergeron, no Krejci. You know, I mean, Tuka Rask also not there. I know they've got good goalies who've come in behind him, but he was a big part of that success as well. Zdeno Char, like we talked about already, and, you know, a plethora of other guys who were big-time factors. Milan Lucic back in the day. So. I do think that things are going to be different uh, and I see Toronto winning this series. I think it's going to be close. I think that each game is going to be uh, probably pretty tight, but ultimately I see Toronto winning it uh, on, I guess the Bruins ice this time uh, in a game seven matchup. Yeah. I mean, it would be foolish not to suggest this game is going to go seven. Um, because of the importance of defense, goaltending, and the history the Leafs have of or their key guys not stepping up against the Bruins, I'm gonna I'm gonna go Bruins in seven. Uh, not gonna make the mistake of like I did in 2013, congratulating Leafs fans that I know for uh, win- winning the series when it's four uh, one. Yeah. I won't make that mistake, but yeah. I think it could easily go either way. But I think the Bruins defense goaltending will be enough to uh to get it done uh not convinced there's anything beyond this uh for them but i think uh i think that's that's how it's gonna shake out either way it's gonna go seven it's gonna cause a stir social media is gonna be unbearable uh but um yeah that's playoff hockey and uh we're looking forward to it uh game one 8 p.m saturday night in uh in Boston, Mike, before we uh, part, let people know where they can find uh, find you and your co-host on social media and, and where they can find uh, the podcast. Yeah, I mean, you can find the Locked On These podcasts wherever you get your, your podcast from, whichever streaming platform you use for uh, to get your audio cast. But we're also up on YouTube, and um, we just surpassed the 5,000 uh, subscriber mark, which oh, we're happy nice. about. We're actually doing a a Matthews jersey giveaway because of it. So, uh, yeah. So if you want to head over to Locked On Leafs, quickly subscribe. (laughs) Uh, You can still get in on the the giveaway as well. So uh, go and do that. But you can also find myself on uh, on X, as we now call it, uh, at Mickey underscore Canuck. Very nice. And people can find uh, Locked On Bruins, of course, everywhere. Your favorite podcast app. Also on YouTube. Follow along at Locked NHL Bruins at ENC McLaren and uh, Mike. Thanks for uh, for doing this. May the better team win, however it goes. And uh, yeah, good luck. Uh, good luck in the playoffs. You too, man. It was fun. We'll have to definitely do another crossover throughout the series. Definitely. Though.